So we are going to talk about the importance of splittings in the context of modules over a ring. So let's suppose we have some module M and then we have a submodule N of M. One thing you might be tempted to say is that M should be isomorphic to N direct sum with M mod N. It seems like in this case we get the information from N over here and then all of the rest of the information would be in M mod N because then we just take out the N. So it makes sense that we would have this relation. And then we could break up the module as a direct sum. But the question is, how exactly would we prove this? Well, if we want to show that two things are isomorphic, we need to show that there is an isomorphism. So let's suppose we have some map phi that goes from n direct sum m mod n to the original module m. How exactly would we define a phi? Well, it's not too difficult to figure out where we could send an element in n. We could say that phi of n, this is just going to equal n, because of course this is a submodule of the original module, so we can just send every element to itself. But here's the question. We also have this element that I'm going to call t, which is in the quotient module, m mod n. And the elements in here are not elements of m, they're cosets. They're going to look like m plus n. And how are we going to send this back to the original module? Well, the cosets m plus n, these are not elements of the original module. But this m in front, this is an element of the module. So it seems like we would want to take the coset and send it back to the module by saying phi of m plus n is just going to give us m. We just take this element in the front. The problem is, when we do this, we are implicitly choosing a coset representative. In other words, there's another coset that's the exact same as this one, m plus n plus n where n is any element in this submodule. And so these two are the same set, so they need to map to the same thing. But of course, we can't say that this is equal to m plus n, because now we have two different outputs for the exact same input. That's not going to work. So what we really need is to figure out which of these elements are we going to send. This m and this m plus n, those are called coset representatives. They both represent the same coset, m plus n. So in order to define this map phi, we need to pick one specific coset representative and then say for both of these cosets, we're going to send it to that specific representative. Then our map will be well defined. Now the way we're going to talk about picking a coset representative for each coset is using a function. We're going to define a function psi which goes from m mod n to m. And the idea is we're taking the cosets in the quotient module, and for each of them, we're going to choose a coset representative that is an element in the original module. And we can specify the representative for each coset by talking about where it gets sent by this map psi. And this psi right here is what we call a splitting. Now we said the point of this map psi is that it gives us a coset representative for each of the elements in m mod n. So if we think about what happens to psi of m plus n for some element, the coset of this element in the module should be the same as m plus n. And of course the coset of this element is just given by psi of m plus n and then plus n. So this is our coset. This should equal the original m plus n. That's what it means for this to be a coset representative. So now that we have our function psi to give us a coset representative for every coset, we can finish defining our map phi here. We know that n is going to get sent to n, and then this t, which is actually a coset in the quotient module, we can send that to psi of t, which is going to take the coset and it's going to pick a specific representative that's in the original module. So now we have our map, and we need to check that phi is an isomorphism like we want.
If we want phi to be an isomorphism of R modules, it first of all needs to be a homomorphism. So let's check that first. If we take phi of n1 comma t1 plus phi of n2 comma t2, this is going to give us n1 plus psi of t1 plus n2 plus psi of t2. And then on the other hand, if we look at phi of n1 plus n2 comma t1 plus t2, so if we add these two things first and then apply phi, this is going to give us n1 plus n2 plus psi of t1 plus t2. Now for a homomorphism, we want these two things to be equal. We know that a module group is abelian, so we can switch this around, bring the n2 to the front, that's fine. But what we need to have is psi of t1 plus psi of t2 equals psi of t1 plus t2. In other words, psi needs to be a group homomorphism. Similarly, if we look at phi of rn1 comma rt1, this is going to give us rn1 plus psi of rt1. And on the other hand, if we bring the r out of the phi function, take r times phi of m1 comma t1, this is going to give us, if we distribute the r in, we'll have r times n1 plus psi of t1, and if we distribute this, r times n1 plus r times psi of t1. So in this case, we see these two parts are the same, but we need psi of r times t1 equals r times psi of t1. That's the other condition for a module homomorphism. It needs to be r linear. We need to be able to pull the r to the outside of the psi. So we see that for this isomorphism to work, for it to be a homomorphism, we need psi to also be a homomorphism. So that's going to be our other condition on the splitting map. Now we need to show that phi is injective and surjective. We'll start with injectivity, and to do that we can just show that the kernel of phi is equal to zero. So let's suppose that phi of n comma t is equal to zero. In that case we have n plus psi of t equals zero. Our goal is to show that this implies n equals zero and t equals zero. From here, we're going to use the fact that psi of t is a coset representative of t. And to do that, we're going to look at the coset of each side of this equation. So what is the coset of n plus psi of t? Well, n is already in the submodule n, so this part we can ignore when we're looking at the coset. So really, on the left side, we're looking at psi of t plus n. And here, psi of t plus n, we know that that's just going to give us the original element inside of the psi here. So by this equation up here, this is just the same thing as the coset t. And that's equal to n, which is the same thing as 0 plus n. So we've shown our first condition. We wanted to show that t is equal to 0, and we've done that right here. We also need to show that n is equal to 0. And we can do that by taking the splitting on both sides of this equation here. Because if we look at psi of t, since t is equal to 0, this is equal to psi of 0. But we said that psi has to be a homomorphism. And a homomorphism is always going to map the group identity on one side to the group identity on the other side. So this is going to be equal to 0 as well. And therefore, n plus 0 equals 0 which means that n has to be equal to 0 as well. And therefore, we have both our conditions, n equals 0 and t equals 0. So we know that phi is injective. The last thing we need is for phi to be surjective. In other words, if we have some m that's in the module, we want to be able to write m as n plus psi of t. How are we going to do that? Well, first of all, let's think about the part with psi. We know that m has a coset, m plus n. And we know that psi gives us a coset representative of m plus n. So this coset here is going to be the same thing 
as m plus n. That's part of the definition of psi. Now from here, if we subtract psi of m plus n from both sides, we're going to get m minus psi of m plus n. The coset of this is equal to 0 plus n. And this is only possible because the set over here is 0 plus n. This is only possible if m minus psi of m plus n is inside the submodule n. Now what is this condition telling us? Well, it's telling us that m minus psi of m plus n is equal to some element n, which is in our submodule. But notice what happens if we add psi of m plus n on both sides. We're going to get m equals n plus psi of m plus n. And look at that. We've written m as n, some element in the submodule, plus psi of something. And therefore, every element in our original module can be expressed as phi of n comma m plus n. And therefore, we've shown that phi is surjective. And therefore, it is an R module isomorphism. So m is isomorphic to n direct sum with m mod n. Now, this isomorphism does not always hold. There are a lot of modules and submodules where m is not isomorphic to n direct sum with m mod n. But we just showed that if we have a specific type of map psi, then we know we have an isomorphism. So whether this isomorphism is satisfied really depends on whether we can construct this splitting. And the goal of this splitting map psi is that it gives us a coset representative for every coset in the quotient module. And psi has to be an R module homomorphism. Now we need psi to be a homomorphism so that phi is also a homomorphism. And we use the fact that psi gives us coset representatives when we're trying to prove injectivity and surjectivity. So we've just shown that if we have an R module homomorphism that gives us a coset representative for every coset in M mod N, then we can use that splitting to show that M is isomorphic to N direct sum M mod N.